Uh, tell me first off, I, I know, you know, Cohesity uh, also dealing in the security, uh, ransomware, uh, backup space. But what do you see happening with deals and what do you make of what I'm trying to figure out on net revenue retention? The idea that those numbers can come down even if your customers are still just as committed because maybe your employee, your customers aren't growing headcount and consumption as much as they were. Yeah, I think uh, there's no, as Jeff Bezos said, there's no compression algorithm for experience. I think you saw that today in both Palo Alto, sorry, this week in Palo Alto and Cisco's earnings. Uh, I think Nikesha Rover is running one of the best companies. Um, they've, and you've also, there's no compression algorithm for great products. Uh, I was pleased to see, you know, products like Expanse. I was an investor in Expanse uh, years ago, doing really well in that nearly nine-figure deal with DOD. So cybersecurity, as he pointed out, is a secular trend. Um, if you're authentic with great products, uh, Cisco announced earlier today, they, earlier this week, they have Duo. That's a great product. Um, and then I think to your key metric, um, these are metrics that you have to look over the arc of several quarters, uh, whether it's ARR, whether it's net revenue retention, whether it's the other aspects of growth or margin rule of 40. And in many of those metrics, uh, especially Palo Alto, 25% growth um, and 20% operating margins, they are well of rule of 45. At their scale, six, seven billion, they're executing very well. Those metrics sort of, you know, blend themselves out over a multi-quarter period. Uh, we're also going to get some insights from Intel's head of data center and AI a little bit later on in the hour. I spoke to her last night, but uh, part of that had to do with hyperscaler spending and how perhaps with the macro slowing down, they're already starting to rein in some of their spending on infrastructure. That could have an impact in 23. How much of an impact, since we've seen so much power among a few players uh, in cloud infrastructure, how much impact would a slowdown in hyperscaler spending have on enterprise software? If you looked at the, this was a couple of weeks ago at the earnings of AWS and Azure and Google, Google somewhat held a uh, quarter over quarter, but uh, both AWS and Azure slowed. But let's be clear, uh, AWS, even at that sort of mid to high 20s growth, you know, had 20 billion in revenue in the last quarter. That's like producing one Adobe in a quarter. Uh, so this is huge, this law of large numbers. And I think what's happening at customers is they're throttling back some of their spending. It's a little bit, you know, cloud computing is elastic. It's like keeping a light on or off. If they feel like they need to use less capacity, they're going to pull it back. Maybe some of their big enterprise EDPs, as they call it, they scale back. Uh, but I still think the trend is inevitable move to the cloud. That's certainly what we're watching at Cohesity: cloud, data, and security. These are three segments, I think, that are seeming to mm -hmm. hold strong even as the valuations have come down quite a bit. Yeah, Sanjay, these are very large numbers and the move to the cloud feels inevitable. But as John likes to say, there's different kinds of cloud and maybe we're past the first innings for infrastructure. How willing are enterprises to spend on sort of the second layer on things like DevOps and cybersecurity? Um, obviously, that's remained very resilient. But I guess the question is, could we see more of a slowdown? Even Amazon coming down from 20 percent was a big you know, jump down from what it previously was notching. Is the market prepared for more? Th yeah, I think you make a good point. I mean, that uh, layer of infrastructure, platform, and apps, those are three layers of cloud. Uh, in infrastructure, uh, over time, it's going to get extremely competitive, commoditized. That's good for customers uh, as compute, storage, and networking, you know, get more or less sort of, you know, much less differentiated. But at that platform layer, especially data services, I watch what Snowflake, what MongoDB, what Confluent, what Datadog, Many of them are partners driving in AWS. AWS and Azure have some of their own services. Google certainly plays in that with BigQuery. And then I'm watching very closely what they do at the SaaS layer. Uh, only Microsoft has Office 365. Um, you know, maybe there's M&A that AWS and Google consider to get bulk up as valuations come down. Um, so I think there's certainly going to be a lot more layer in the platform and security. And then horizontally across all of them, sort of in sectors like what we played for easily, security ties across all of those layers. Um, I expect them. Microsoft's the only one of those three that's announced a very strong portfolio in security. Of course, Google, most recently with the acquisition of Mandiant, we're partnering closely with them. We'll have to see how they proceed in security. Yeah, a lot of game left to play. Sanjay, thank you. Good to see you. Sanjay Pune. Happy Thanksgiving to you all. Happy Thanksgiving.